So I was thinking, okay, why not build some small post generator for LinkedIn as a first project? And it's kind of blown on LinkedIn. I get like over 200,000 views on this post. Do you have your favorite building public creators? There is some founders who share their revenue updates. On Twitter, obviously, there's like a couple of very popular, like the everyone following him built more than 70 projects. There's like a really significant amount of builders. How do you monetize your projects? All, all monetized by the subscription models. Currently, that's like monthly revenue for both Postly and Papermark, mm -hmm. maybe a bit more. So which channel, marketing channel, brings the most customers? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> Hi guys, it is my pleasure to welcome another guest. In today's episode, we have Yulia, who builds Postly, the platform that helps to create content. She's here to tell us more about it and also share her experiences with other projects or even funding. Also, a few words for the viewers. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and like the video. Uh, and you can also follow Yulia on social networks. Everything will be in the description. Well, can you introduce yourself to our listeners and viewers? What is your background and what are you working on right now? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nicola, for having me. Um, so my name is Julia and um, I'm basically building uh, in public um, currently a number of tools. One of them you already said about it's Postly. It's a LinkedIn post generation tool. Uh, my background is in technology, but I was working in different fields around, um, was a founder of uh, investor back startup, and then now I get to this bootstrapped building journey, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I understand correctly from your post on social media, but you are a PhD student right now or af you are after graduation right now? Yeah, I was I was doing the PhD before. So I was like in the university in Finland. Um, I was doing the master degree there. And after that, I was doing the PhD in uh, mostly it's like education technology. It was just before COVID. Uh, so nobody cared about education technology at the moment or online learning, online courses. And I was doing re the research about that, how, um, how like video, for example, impact on education, yeah, and how you can track different things. Uh, but I basically finished my and defend my degree. And yeah, so that's, that's uh, in the past um, in, mm -hmm. in a way, but academia can come back always in your life. <laughs> How are you able to handle all of those things like studying and creating uh, tools, running businesses? How? <laughs> I think it's always like um, not at the same time. Like I liked always to build different projects, but when I was in uh, university, that was mainly the project within, yes, within my field. So I was doing the research in education technology and building some related small projects. I didn't know how to code, so I, I, I learned how to code nine or ten months ago, so before I didn't know about that. Wow. But always... <laughs> but like I build them with the no code, yes, if mm -hmm. you can say some, some things before. And it always was within the scope of what I'm doing. But now I'm not doing anything else, but I'm mostly building the project and also support a couple of companies sometimes on the growth uh, strategy. Um, yeah, that's what I'm mm -hmm. doing now. Uh, once you created a post in which you were talking about failures in businesses, uh, it was something like, I failed one company and 20 plus attempts to build a startup from a certain year. How did you get those business ideas and how did you test them and what is the process behind every project? I think there's no like kind of strict structure. Yeah, you just get an idea randomly by by being out there 
I think that being out there is the main thing and being out there is either you listen some something, you heard something from the friends or you read something on social and you get inspired, at least I get inspired that way uh, to, to build uh, something. And I think like one of them, first ideas I had, it was a very weird one. I was thinking um, to set up, it was something like 2010 maybe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was thinking like, okay, I want to set up the vending machines. So that's like, you need to deliver them from China and <laughs> set that up. It, it never worked. I mean, it was the peak of vending machines. They were just starting appearing, yes, in, in different countries. And I was thinking, okay, I will try also, maybe that's a cool idea, vending machines with the food, but it never, I never ordered them at the end of the day. I stuck on the planning and um, yeah, but it helped by implementing some other ideas. Yeah, so mm -hmm. not, not all ideas get there. And how old were you at those times? Because it's very ambitious idea. Yeah, that that's like i think i didn't understand that but <laughs> um, but it was like so if it was 2010 i'm trying to count how, how old i am so and it was one of the first ideas i was around 16 that wow that time might be uh, maybe a bit 17 yeah it's quite early age because many people i know are yes you know They, they start with some business at 20s and later, but you were very young starting with your own business. Who inspired you to run any business? Do you have any in family who is running you know, their own businesses or what's the background of these stories? Yeah, so my father is run the business. That's why I think it, it was always kind of in in around me so that you can run your own business you can basically sell something or uh, so software came a little bit later yes mm -hmm. so i the software was not clear at, at those moments but um yeah there was always idea that you can live independent life that you don't need to work more than one or two hours a day but you still can uh, do something uh impactful and uh just what you will enjoy so wow and i would like to talk more about postly because it's your current project could you describe in a little bit closer to our viewers and listeners why you decided to create a tool specifically for linkedin and how it started for example you can showcase your results you have so far and everything you want to mention about this project Yeah, so the Brosley started, I think this was like my first um, developer project um, around that time, one year ago. I was just out from the other company, which I was founded. It was investor-backed company. We figured out that it's not going to work anymore. We shut in everything down. And it was like the end of 2022. And um, then I was thinking, okay, what I'm going to do next? I was starting writing on LinkedIn. I decided I will commit. I'm going to write every day. I'm going to be this person who writes every day. Let's see what happened. And then um, I decided to try myself in to code something because I never code anything before um, because it was like I always started. I always watching these courses. It never worked for me. And um, this time uh, with the chat GPT, I decided, okay, I will try again. Uh, chat GPT here. Um, I can ask a couple of my friends to help me with the initial setup and uh, will work. And then I was thinking, okay, it's like, I want not just to learn the code. I want to implement some project because what is the reason just to learn the code? And um, I was thinking, okay, which project? <laughs> And because I was writing already like for three months on LinkedIn all the time, and I knew I was also writing on Twitter, 
And I knew that on Twitter, nobody want to write, to build anything for LinkedIn. Yeah? So it's like Twitter people think that the LinkedIn is cringe and nobody, <laughs> nobody want to build for it. So I was thinking, okay, why not to build some small post generator for LinkedIn as a first project? And it's kind of blown uh, on LinkedIn. I get like over 200,000 views on this post and uh, I, I decided, okay, then I will maybe continue to develop it in something. So it was a fully free tool um, and slowly I was building more on it and then it's become a full uh, op operational management platform for LinkedIn, which is like yet still a lot to develop, but <laughs> as usual. Uh, but um, it's kind of journey from building something which occasionally, apparently, people need, and then developing in something bigger together with the users and customers. Mm -hmm. And how many people are involved in this project? Are you a solopreneur or do you have some partner in crime? No, so uh, I have kind of zero partners, but a lot of um, people I'm getting feedback, a lot of um, LinkedIn influencers or just my friends or the people who see the project, they leave in the feedback and um it's also like the first part of that was open source it means like that the code of that is open so this also get like some stars and contributors uh, to that so that's also uh, interesting interesting journey for me so mm -hmm. uh, regarding linkedin and twitter what are the differences between these two, because uh, you said that you was a little bit inspired by Twitter, but also uh, you was uh, present on LinkedIn. So what are the differences uh, we, can, uh, we can see between these two platforms? I think, I think there's definitely the difference of, um, of two. And, and for me, the difference is a lot about who you follow and who you reading there and on the other platform. So on Twitter, there's like a really significant amount of builders of people who, who started the company, who started it solo, who started it um, with someone, uh, indie hackers, founders. Whereas on LinkedIn, I would say there's much more um, service-based businesses. It's like consulting-based businesses, uh, support businesses, much less um, indie hackers or founders writing on on LinkedIn, at least to my experience. So, it's, of course, impacting the content and type of content. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that I read one post from you where you mentioned that uh, after building Postly or other your projects, you were offered at least two uh, job opportunities. Uh, why did you decide uh, to postpone that? So um, there were like, I think, first of all, like when you're writing on, on social, what I understand, you will get the job opportunities. And I have a lot of friends who um, get the job that way. Yeah? So they start writing, they get the full-time job and that was their goal and they were happy to do that. Yeah? My goal initially was not to get the job, um, but to build my projects, to figure out what I like to do, what I want to do next. And so that's, that was not a goal. Um, but though I still kind of grab sometimes these opportunities for the part-time projects, yes, or um, kind of with the growth, with helping companies with the growth. So I still I still doing that um, as it's not so easy financial life as a, as a founder. And also because it's a lot of learning to support also some other companies which already a bit further on on the journey uh, and not only just build your own projects all the time. So, mm -hmm. but I cannot 
imagine now to commit myself to the full-time job where I would need to to mm-hmm. give up on projects with them, which I'm doing. So mm-hmm. that's definitely not going to work anymore. So. And right now, do you work only on Postly or do you have any other side projects that uh, finance your um, life and, you know, uh, Postly contribution? So there's like one project I work uh, where it's like I'm not the main co-founder. There's like the founder, um, Mark, and um, the project is the open source alternative to DocSend. This is like the document sharing platform called Papermark. I'm working actively on growth part of that and I'm the co-founder of that or co-creator of that, but mostly from the side of the content or front facing up um, side of the website, uh, user experience. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one is like really contributing a lot and, and it's growing quite quickly. So I would say that Postly and Paper are growing approximately on the same level at the moment. Um, I'm also currently working with the growth company or oh, on growth with one company called UI Bakery. This is like the alternative of the retool. Uh, it's it's kind of a low code platform for application development and I help um, the founders to to grow on different levels with the SEO strategies, um, ad strategies and, and something else. So that's that's kind of part time. Mm-hmm. Um, employment and work, yeah. And I think I think of course I'm sometimes getting some ideas and building them, but <laughs> mm, when I cannot stop myself. But of course, when you're more busy, you are like thinking more about to get it in or not, or how faster to test it. Uh, but I get sometimes in that I spent like half a month ago. I spent like two three days on building this wedding planner so which will generate wedding plans it didn't work very well <laughs> but i mean it's out there so and how many so, hours do you spend by work because you work so much it's like i'm not calling it work yet yeah? so i'm <laughs> calling it the, the lifestyle um maybe I would I would not say I spend um, maybe six days a week. I definitely get one weekend uh, for a week. I n- try not to break that rule, and I would say I never break that rule. So I'm always take one week off fully um, every week plus um, every month or every month and a half. I'm trying to take three or four days off, whereas you completely off. Mm. And uh, I, I'm making these like light days also in the middle of the week because I feel like I'm really burning. If you do something from Monday to to Friday, I feel like somewhere on the begin in the middle on Wednesday or Thursday you're just like super tired. So I'm trying to take these kind of breaks uh, for mm-hmm. for that. So. I, I would not say that I'm like big overworker sometimes, but yeah. I see. Uh, regarding Postly, how do you monetize your projects? Not only Postly, but also the other you have. It is some subscription model or donations or other types of monetizing? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, all, all monetized by the subscription model. So the Postly you subscribe for the monthly or yearly uh, plans and the paper mark for monthly or yearly plans. Sometimes I do this if I build some other side projects and want to test them. I'm doing this one time payment fee, for example, like lifetime prepayment where people can can try that. Yeah, but those two mostly it's like the the subscriptions. So. Mm-hmm. Also, if uh, you can share some successes with uh, the subscription, you can also some kind of inspiration for people who want to build uh, similar tools. Mm-hmm. 
I think that like you, when you just starting, I would recommend always to um, to give the free option there, yeah? like definitely to give because like if you close um, the tool. Uh, from the beginning and if it's not like something which is super enterprise where you know exactly what you do and you know whom you're selling for but if it's like the more like product-led grow driven tool where the people find it they try it they use it I would definitely open it I would launch it as fast as possible and I would give option maybe for even one-time payment first so it means that you give some of your first users lifetime access yeah mm. so that they can pay one time and never pay again you can limit amount of these users but they will be your first uh, paying customers if if they're the doubt yeah on uh, on their subscribing yes mm -hmm. like many many uh, SaaS companies now struggling with subscriptions and many of them could find the model of the usage-based pricing or like one-time payments where they would also win. So that's definitely, subscription is not the only way to go, especially early stage, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, of who uses your two specified target audience and current users of Postly? Uh, so it's of course LinkedIn creators. I think that the Postly is the best for the early stage creators. Uh, I think the best kind of or the most um, used feature is this like um, the templates. So there's like the number of templates of existing uh, posts from different users from LinkedIn, which you can uh, use for designing your own posts yes you kind of reusing need you're using the ai on top of that and and making the posts so this is very kind of helpful for early stage users because when i start writing on linkedin myself it helped me some time to figure out like how you need to structure your posts yes it's not like you're coming in there and you know that all yeah and linkedin is very heavy on the formatting Yes, if, if, if your text is not easy readable, it's very hard to get your text out there. So that's like, it's just increasing your chances of um, creating this structure, this kind of hook, this kind of format for the post, which helps a lot. So, and this is what the Postly helping with, with the, with the formatting and designing your posts. Even if you have the great ideas, yes, great thoughts, you need to package them for LinkedIn. It's like kind of what what it's doing. And I think mm -hmm. the best is for for people who want to start growing there. So that's mm -hmm. my experience, at least with the speaking with different users mm -hmm. uh, about that. And what are your plans with Postly in the future? So currently I'm working on it, developing, updating uh, the tool. Um, there is like the early stage revenue, but it's still very unclear what will happen with that. Yeah, so I will continue working on that. And I think by the end of the year, it will be much more clear mm -hmm. where it goes or what will happen with it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if I read correctly, uh, you have right now, I think, 1000 monthly revenue or so currently that's like 1000 monthly revenue for both Postly and Papermark, mm -hmm. maybe a bit more, like maybe 1100 or something like that. So both projects approximately making the same, but the difference is that um, for Papermark you, you we charge three times more, so it's less customers, but they pay more, so that's still... Uh, it's range from ten dollar for Postly to thirty dollar for Papermark, and uh, we introduce in these higher plans in there to to see how that mm -hmm. could and, grow uh, faster. Mm -hmm. And what do you think that which channel marketing channel brings the most customers of Postly? I think of course the LinkedIn and the Google. 
Mm-hmm. The Google, I think, is very valuable and um, maybe underrated by someone, but like people who find in Google the post generator, they, they get into the postly and that's, that's, that's how they uh, transfer into the customers. So Google working everywhere, but I mostly develop two channels. So I'm not doing anything like, I don't know, webinars, ads, nothing, no paid, no outbound reach, like um, cold calling or cold messages. I'm only doing the SEO for Google and uh, the social, so posting Mm -hmm. Reddit, Twitter, LinkedIn uh, for both projects or for any projects which I'm building uh, for test. I also always doing the social, so that's that's at least my way. (laughs) Okay, get it. So organic uh, growth. In one of your posts, you mentioned that you paid a programmer or coder to build the project, but the business wasn't as successful as you expected. Then you started with coding your own project. What resources have you used for learning? Did you have a mentor? Because you mentioned GPT, but I suppose that you have other tools or other, uh, I would say, other options for creating your tools. what were your initial thoughts uh, when you started with coding and programming? Because maybe some listeners or viewers of this video cast wants to start with coding and coding and programming. So maybe something useful for them. Mm, so there were two helps for me. So the help of my friends to set up that because I had no idea how to set up. I had like the Visual Studio, but like mm. I mean that's. That's as far as I could. And the rest I did all with ChatGPT. Uh, but I took from the beginning the existing open source project. So there's like, I think, three, three pillars. So you need the setup, yes, for the specific language, all these installations. And this is kind of you need to figure out. The GPT also can advise you on that. Uh, if you... Uh, but like building from scratch is very hard. That's why I decided, okay, I will take the open source project, which doing this like Twitter bio post. I took two open source projects and then I start figuring this them out. But you can just take one project, check how it looks. For example, if you have no ideas, I would go on the Vercel templates. So they have, they basically the hosting platform on which you can instantly host in one click what you build and they have the templates Uh, if you have the github account they have all instructions you can just set up this template then if you have nobody to help you you can Mm -hmm. ask the gpt how to install this project so all everything for it to work it will suggest you most probably uh it will work for you Mm -hmm. so that's like um that's how i would do that if, if you're driven by the projects uh, to be built fast. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, That is great. Uh, you are an advocate for a building public uh, approach. Where do you showcase your process, website, social media, or appropriate, appropriate form of showcasing your journey? Because I noticed you on LinkedIn, but I suppose that you are on other social media as well. So how do you share your journey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like writing on LinkedIn and Twitter daily, or I'm trying to do it daily, not every day. And then I'm posting from time to time more like a story formats for Reddit. Um, They work very well, sometimes in the hackers also, but not maybe once a month. What else? The product hunt, obviously, for launching. If there's some new new idea that could be used for launching, yeah. And I would say that's that's mostly it. I also wrote on the dev tool. This is good for the developers. I wrote just like how how I get from zero to one, so I can basically provide the link for this video. 
where I describe how I set up the first project, where, where it goes, um, how my first developer experience was. But I think that's, that's like mostly this LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, DevTo, Reddit, and Indie Hackers, and Product Hunt, mm -hmm. but all, not every day. <laughs> Yes, see. Uh, do you have your favorite building public creators? Feel free to name a few. Oh, that's hard. <laughs> I mean, on Twitter, obviously, there's like a the couple of very popular, like the Livelcio, everyone following him. I think he's like a uh, kind of the big, big, uh, big guy, everyone. Um, building in public, build more than 70 projects. Um, yeah. So there's like not so many on LinkedIn though. I think that's like, um, there is some founders who sharing their revenue updates or their journey updates, but not so many sharing like really the insights, the inner kitchen. Um, yeah, I, I would mostly, if, if you're looking for someone building in public, I would go on Twitter definitely to, to find. Mm -hmm. Uh, what takeaways do you have during your journey? Oh, this is the hard question. <laughs> a lot of takeaways. I think it's just like um, the whole idea of the building public is just like um, sharing yeah, before you do even everything. Everything should be shared. So that's, that's what I would recommend. Even if you build something which looks ugly, share it. You will improve it. People give you the feedback and then, then it's become much better. Or maybe not, nobody care and then you will not need even to invest more time in that. Yeah. I forever will recommend building in public and sharing and pushing your project there out as fast as possible. There will be a lot of people who will say or like, but of course, nobody going to use such a raw project. Yes, but if it's solving the problem or if there's like close to the problem, you will get the feedback as fast as possible. If you're not sure, you're going to get zero feedback. So you will never know. Maybe in one year after you build it without telling everybody, anyone about it, you will push it and understand that nobody needs that. And this will be much worse than if you do it after one week mm -hmm. or one month or one day. Mm. Uh, have you any thoughts at the end of this episode? Because we are at the end, so feel free to share your motivational speech. Um, I think that's a, that was my motivational speech already before. Um, yeah, I think um, in general, every experience, I value all experiences I had like the university experience, the investor backed startup experience, like building in public experience, they no right or wrong. Everyone select what fitting them best would work for them. So, but without trying, you will never know. So I would always uh, say that you need to expose yourself. Yeah. Um, if you want to build a business, um, and uh, this is intimidating and hard and it, it doesn't matter if you want to build a business, if you want to start coding, if you want to, uh, to start writing on the uh, uh, social, it's all about the exposure. So that's, um, don't be afraid to fail and expose yourself. I think that's, that's the only thing. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Also, thanks to the viewers for watching this episode. But we are not done. We continue in the Hero Hero community. I will put the link in the description below. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yulia, thank you for accepting the invitation and also for sharing your thoughts. I wish you all the best in building your projects. What are your thoughts about this platform under the ownership of Elon Musk? That's definitely the reason why LinkedIn is becoming more popular. What is the attribute? that makes LinkedIn posts so successful. The promotion of your brand doesn't work the way it was before, yeah? Like posting the post from your company is not gonna help you. Mm -hmm. Do you have 
any useful tips on how to attract an investor? Uh, so for Papermark, we created this database of 10,000 investors all over the world, which you can go through, find, for example, the investors in your region or in your sector, and just reach out even before you're fundraising, yes? It's all taking time, yes? Like with the enterprise sales. You will not close your sale, your deal in one day. 